As we enter the second quarter of the 21st century, increased launch frequency is driving a critical need for fully and rapidly reusable rockets. This presents a formidable challenge for manufacturers, particularly in developing an ultra-reusable heat shield that can endure the intense forces of atmospheric re-entry while remaining cost-effective. Elon Musk himself has acknowledged this technological barrier. However, one Louisville-based company is determined to turn this challenge into an opportunity with a groundbreaking patent-pending technology that could revolutionize spaceflight safety. Join us as we explore this game-changing technology in today's episode. The Louisville-based Sierra Space Company is positioning itself as a leading commercial space company at the forefront of innovation and the commercialization of space in the orbital age. To achieve that goal, the company took the path few have taken, designing the Dream Chaser space plane inspired by NASA's space shuttle, which has been described as a bad design. NASA's original space shuttle had a wing design that was much like that of an airplane. Instead of being independent and perched atop a rocket, it was integrated with an external fuel tank that provided fuel for its main engines and had two solid rocket boosters attached at the sides. Each space shuttle was designed to fly at least 100 missions, but they actually flew fewer than that. This was only used by the National Agency from 1981 until 2011 and was retired in 2011 for high-cost operation, long turnaround time, and unsafe. That means once Sierra Space decided to bring 1980s technology back to life, they had to do an almost complete redesign. And among them, the thermal protection system should be the biggest focus. It needs to be safe, reliable, and low-cost to keep up with the new trend of commercial space, fast turnaround times, and low prices like airplanes. So what's their strategy? They started with solving issues of the tiles falling off, which happened early in the space shuttle program. The tiles on Dream Chaser utilize a room temperature vulcanizing RTV silicone to keep the tiles bonded to the vehicle at all times. The silicone can withstand high temperatures, making it ideal for use, and each of the tiles is tested by a mechanism that pulls on each one. Using the lessons learned from the shuttle program, Sierra Nevada engineers updated the TPS tiles using innovative and modern technologies, making the tiles stronger, lighter, and cheaper than the ones used for the shuttle. The tiles on Dream Chaser are approximately 10 by 10 inches, while the tiles used on the shuttle are about 6 by 6 inches. This allows fewer overall tiles to be used and ensures the TPS tiles are intact during re-entry. The next step is innovating those tiles. In fact, they collaborate with the U.S. Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory to design the new heat shields using silicon carbide-based materials for reusability and high temperature resistance. Made from advanced materials, the new heat shield will have to endure extremely high atmospheric re-entry temperatures over multiple frequent travels. The TPS tiles are made of a proprietary composite material that's as strong as carbon fiber, but with the added high temperature stability of ceramic materials. The composite tiles have low density thermal protection properties that are vital for insulative protection and stable flight dynamics. Atmospheric re-entry exposes spacecraft to speeds of more than Mach 17, about 13,000 miles per hour with temperatures reaching higher than 3,100 degrees Fahrenheit, 1,604 degrees Celsius. Its exterior tiles allow it to resist a huge heating load, and the insulating tile backside provides adequate protection to keep the other parts of the spacecraft at nominal temperatures. As a result, safety and reliability are greatly increased, reducing maintenance time between flights and extending the life of the shield. That will be a game changer because, in the past, exterior tiles used on the space shuttle were only needed for an average of five missions per year. But given the new TPS design on Dream Chaser, that number will increase to a minimum of 15 missions and is contracted with NASA for space station resupply missions. With a nine-month reprocessing time, the tile's light weight helps optimize the commercial payload, and its physical properties ensure that the space plane's surface keeps its aerodynamic profile over multiple flights by withstanding changes in size and shape caused by extreme heat exposure. 
Keeping a consistent outer mold line is important for reusability. It keeps the aerodynamics the same to allow the vehicle to fly as designed, declared Greg Larson, ORNL Principal Investigator. All of them are not short-term efforts. More than three decades is the number of times that the team at Sierra Space and Oak Ridge National Laboratory spent designing the new system. The discovery of a unique crystalline structure formed when combining silicon carbide with carbon fibers in specific conditions is truly a complete paradigm shift. The experiments show that the new TPS tiles survived conditions that would have destroyed the traditional designs of the heat shield. Of course, they only stopped at the first stage of development, but Sierra Space and OATL are confident in filing for a patent. Next, the new tiles will undergo a series of tests at NASA's Ames Arc Jet Complex, a unique facility that simulates the aerothermodynamic heating of hypersonic atmospheric entry. Subsequently, Sierra Space and OATL will work to lower the TPS production costs using advanced manufacturing techniques, and then they will be ready to equip a Dream Chaser space plane. Once completed, the new TPS system is planned to be used on Sierra Space's Dream Chaser moving forward, including the second Dream Chaser, called Reverence. It's safe to say that Sierra Space has made a great step forward in producing an extremely complex technology like a heat shield. Elon Musk publicly admitted that creating a fully reusable heat shield is the biggest challenge in spacecraft design. It intertwines materials, science, engineering, and operational reliability. Reusable heat shields must endure extreme temperatures during re-entry. For instance, during re-entry, temperatures can reach up to 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which exceeds the melting point of many materials. This necessitates the use of advanced materials that can withstand such conditions without degrading or failing over multiple uses. The challenge lies in finding materials that not only resist high temperatures, but also maintain structural integrity after repeated exposure to these harsh environments. Secondly, unlike ablative shields that burn away during re-entry, reusable shields must remain intact and functional after each flight. Furthermore, it must have a long life so that it can be reused quickly and many times. This requires meticulous attention to detail in material selection and design to prevent issues like cracks or thermal fatigue, which could lead to catastrophic failures. Engineers must ensure that every component can survive multiple cycles of extreme heating and cooling while maintaining safety standards. Not only do they meet the technical standard, but the heat tiles also have a low cost. The costs associated with inspection, maintenance, and potential repairs after each flight can be prohibitively high if not managed effectively. For example, the Space Shuttle's thermal protection system involved extensive inspections and replacements before each flight, making it costly and time-consuming. A successful reusable heat shield design needs to minimize these costs while ensuring safety and reliability. Last but not least, the heat shield must be seamlessly integrated into the overall spacecraft architecture, which includes considerations for aerodynamics, weight distribution, and structural support during the launch and re-entry phases. As spacecraft designs evolve towards larger vehicles capable of interplanetary missions, ensuring that the heat shield meets these diverse requirements becomes increasingly complex. Almost all private space companies today are aiming for fully reusable fast vehicles as well as deep space missions. Therefore, they don't hesitate to invest billions of dollars in R&D progress and testing. Of course, it would not be unfathomable if many efforts failed or if the dream of regular space travel seemed to be fading. Dream Chaser lives up to its name not only inheriting the legacy of NASA's space shuttle, but also being determined with the dream of bringing the Kennedy Space Center runway back to life and ushering in the next era of space exploration. So, have you ever wondered what the inside of Dream Chaser looks like? Unlike its predecessor, Space Shuttle with the hatch by the side, we access cargo Dream Chaser through the hatch in its back. Climbing inside, as you can see, the place inside is pretty empty, before avionics were installed the internal structure of Dream Chaser looked luxurious. I mean, it had a visible gold composite of aluminum foil and other materials. This is used as a leakage liner to prevent oxygen from leaking out of the vehicle and maintain optimal pressure in the cabin. 
Once fully installed, it seems less cramped rather than the space shuttle. Such a design will allow maximizing the amount of cargo carried. Besides, the large length would benefit the sensitive-sized cargo rather than the capsule. To put it into perspective, Sierra's cargo spacecraft tenacity is roughly a quarter of the total length of the space shuttle orbiters, though the habitable volume is about half the space shuttle. Tenacity can carry 5 tons of pressurized payload and 0.5 tons of unpressurized payload. Among that, it can also bring back 2 tons of cargo, including fragile science experiments, thanks to its modest gravity loading on re-entry and landing, as well as its landing method on the runway. This is what both Starliner and Dragon have not yet to keep up with. This number in Cargo Dragon with slightly less length is over 6 tons, split between pressurized cargo inside the capsule and unpressurized cargo in the trunk, which also houses Dragon's solar panels. Because Boeing produced the crude version of Starliner only, it would be hard to make a comparison here. But with the humble size of 5 meters in length and roughly 5 meters in width shorter than tenacity, I'm pretty sure that its payload capacity in the cargo mode, if any, will not be as much as tenacity for the specialized cargo variant. Tenacity's engineers will focus on stretching the length of the vehicle instead of the wide, which explains why it's not big enough for most humans to stand in. I have no idea if they intend to extend the width of the crew variant, but its image shows that with seven crews inside the vehicle, most of the people will be arranged in seating positions vertically, except for two people near the nose cone. Besides that, the hatch for the re-entry and exit on the ground will be installed on the top of the space plane. The first cargo delivery mission to the International Space Station by Dream Chaser Tenacity, an uncrewed space plane, is delayed until 2025. It will lift off atop United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan Centaur rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, which is next door to KSC. Space plane and module combined will send 7,800 pounds 3, kilograms of cargo to the orbiting lab. Dream Chaser was an early entrant under NASA's commercial crew program, while under the stewardship of predecessor entities to Sierra Space. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.